Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. Yeah. And in this video we're going to talk about a subject we really love, <laughs> Danish design. We're often asked why Danish design is so unique and we'll do our best to answer that question. We will show you some characteristics of Danish design and tell you why the Danes made the best mid-century furniture. As a Swede, it's hard to confess, but Swedish furniture really can't compete with Danish design. No. And yeah, as always, we will focus on furniture. Danish design is obviously so much more than that, but we can't talk about too many different things in a single video, because it would be too confusing. Yes, it would. In uh, 2017, the Danish Design Council published the Danish Design DNA pamphlet, where Danish design was defined. Far from surprising, words like simplicity, durability and social consciousness were used. But what does it really say? To be honest, those words can be used to describe not just Danish, but just about any modernist design. But the pamphlet also listed some of the most important pieces of design ever produced in Denmark. Interestingly, the oldest piece listed is almost a thousand years old. The Skuldelev 3 Viking ship, Skuldelev or something, yeah, I don't know Danish, but remains of uh, this and four other ships were found in 1962 and are now exhibited at the Viking Ship Museum in Roskilde. The Design Council concluded that the slender hull, the graphic striped sail and exquisite uh, craftsmanship personifies Danish design. But is it really relevant to explain modern Danish design by looking at this ship? Well, not really. Ancient cultures all over the world have produced wonderful pieces of design, that's nothing specific for Denmark. But over the centuries, traditional craftsmanship uh, was uh, often forgotten. Yeah, we don't even know how the pyramids were built and we can't replicate the doom of uh, Taj Mahal without the use of modern machinery. But in Denmark, the traditional craftsmanship lived on through the centuries and not even the industrialization managed to fully outcompete joinery and cabinet making. And this might be a contributing factor when explaining the Danish design wonder. An important factor for the furniture industry in the mid-century Denmark was the many close collaborations between skilled cabinet makers and designers. In Copenhagen, the Cabinet Makers Guild held yearly exhibitions between 1927 and 66, showing the country's best furniture. These long range of collaborations resulted in the best pieces of furniture ever produced in Scandinavia. The exhibitions first started because of the Cabinet Makers Guild's feared sheep imported furniture would outcompete the Danish furniture industry. First, the guild tried to convince the government to impose customs duties on imported mm. furniture, but this proposal was rejected. Instead, the annual exhibition was started, with the main purpose to educate the public in craftsmanship and quality, but also to establish close collaborations between designers and cabinet makers. Let's take a look at some of the collaborations and the furniture they resulted in.
all Danish furniture were obviously not as exclusive as the ones produced for the exhibitions. Industrial production was widespread in Denmark, but the exhibited furniture inspired furniture design for the industry. The exclusive models were a huge source of inspiration for designers who soon transformed the pieces into industrial produced versions. In a way, the exhibition functioned as an experimental workshop where the designers were given artistic freedom without the limitations often presented in the furniture industry. But sketches are worthless if the furniture can't be produced, and that's why the cabinet makers played an essential part. They knew exactly what could and what could not be done, and came with an important input in the design process. And now let's talk about aesthetics and why Danish modernist furniture differed a lot from the ones produced at, for example, the Bauhaus school in Germany. It's sometimes said that modern Danish design started with the architect Kåre Klint. It's obviously not that simple, but he was without doubt essential for the Danish design wonder. His four-bar chair, designed in 1914, is often considered to be the first ever truly modern chair designed in Denmark. According to Klint, a furniture designer always should study antique and even ancient furniture models before even thinking of designing furniture. By doing so, furniture design became all about refinement instead of revolutionary innovations. A striking example of this is the red chair designed by Klint in 1927. When designing it, Klint was highly inspired by an 18th century Chippendale chair. Clint found the seat and legs to be perfected, but considered the backrest to be all too complicated and over-decorated. Instead, inspired by another 18th century chair, he replaced it with a simple and straightforward functional leather backrest. And suddenly the traditional Chippendale chair was tra transformed into a modern functional chair. Yeah. And these ideas more or less influenced most Danish furniture designers uh, for the simple reason that Kåre was the founder and teacher of the furniture department at the School of Arts and Crafts in Copenhagen. His way of thinking differs quite a lot from the ideas presented by most international modernist designers at the time. It was sometimes claimed that modernism was a completely new philosophy without any roots in history. In Germany and France, revolutionary ideas resulted in furniture no one ever seen before, but these furniture were often sterile looking and difficult for common people to appreciate. Kåre Klint and his followers in Denmark chose another path and placed modernism in relation to historical predecessors. Uh, by doing so, functional furniture were given a more human face. And we will now show you several Danish pieces of furniture inspired by uh, antique predecessors. This was some uh, explanations why Danish design is so unique. Mm. It's obviously a much more complex issue, but uh, I do think that the uh, preserved traditional craftsmanship in Denmark explains a lot. And that's why it's alarming that more and more production are being moved to low-wage countries uh, to cut costs. Fritz Hansen is I mean, just one example of this. Most of their Danish design classics are nowadays produced in Poland. We've since long seen this development, not least in Sweden, where furniture companies, ceramic studios and glassworks are closed down one by one. And uh, when knowledge and craftsmanship is lost, it's almost impossible to recover, mm. sadly. And yeah, and this was our video about Danish design. I uh, hope you found it interesting. And if you did, you can check out our previous videos. We have really a lot should. of videos. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. For Thank you.